Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology Crack. The next model we're going to be looking at is the uh, layers and structures found within the small intestine. Uh, this is one of my favorite models because it does allow us to look at some uh, smaller structures and look at the intestines as a whole to see some key characteristics between uh, and between the different regions and how to differentiate between the different regions of the small intestine. So. We're going to start with some general classifications of the structures. So we can start with the layers uh, of the GI tract, specifically with this model. So we can start from the top and move our way right down to this nice little muscle layer. This region is going to be called, or this layer is going to be called our mucosa. Remember, the mucosa is going to be comprised of three basic structures or layers or portions, the outermost. Uh, being the simple columnar epithelium or the epithelial layer. This gray layer, this layer that fills the space will be our lamina propria. And then we have this band of muscle found within the mucosa called our uh, muscularis mucosi. Our next layer we're just going to find our connective tissue layer. We're going to find blood vessels. We're going to find nerves. We're going to find glands. We're going to find lymphatic structures. Uh, it's going to be called our submucosa. So sub meaning below mucosa, the mucosa. So submucosa. Our next layer from here to here is going to be our muscularis. Notice we have two layers of muscle, a circular layer and a longitudinal layer. Uh, this will, this these two layers will carry true through the entire alimentary canal, except for the stomach where we will add a third uh, oblique layer uh, to give us some nice churning and turning uh, function, mixing function for that stomach. The outermost layer is going to be called a uh, serosa. Now be careful with this outermost layer. If you go to the esophagus, because it's not uh, within the abdominal cavity and not surrounded by the peritoneum, it's not going to have a serosa. It will have an adventitia. Now, we can look at some uh, specific details within this model to kind of identify some things. We see these green or teal colored looking finger-like proje projections into the lamina propria, into the villi. So this is our villi, so our finger-like projections in the small intestine. So we look at this and we say, okay, well, these are going to be called lacteals. These are lymphatic vessels. Their job is going to be to absorb dietary fat. Uh, these chylomicrons will circulate through the blood. Uh, when you have your blood drawn and they check for triglyceride levels, this is one of the things that they're looking for, circulating fat again. Uh, these triglycerides are going to be absorbed by these lacteals, these lymphatic vessels. Since we're on lymphatic, let's look in the submucosa. We have this big blue ball. This is going to be our Peyer's patch, so it's a lymphatic nodule. Uh, this is going to help surveil food before we move our way into the large intestine. Again, this is also going to be found uh, only in the ileum, so the latter, the last section, uh, which is also the longest section of the small intestine. We move to the side over here. This is called a duodenal gland or Brunner's gland. These glands are going to help uh, to secrete some mucus onto the surface or into the lumen of this tubule onto the surface of the mucosa. Uh, it's called duodenal glands because it is found only in the duodenum. We're not gonna find this in the jejunum or in the ileum. Again, Brunner's glands is another name for it. We see within this layer our first nerve network. This is called a submucosal plexus. The second nerve network is found right here. This is called our myenteric plexus. And these nerve networks are going to allow for parasympathetic innervation, uh, really allow the autonomic nervous system to allow for uh, motility, movement, peristaltic contraction of the muscles when you think of food, smell food, and actually start the digestion process, as well as kick off the secretion of the glands within the small intestine, the stomach, et cetera, uh, to secrete, to help aid in digestion as well. Okay, so this pretty much culminates this model and we covered almost everything uh, that at least we need to know for the lab. Uh, a couple, actually a couple things that we did forget. We see these little blue balls within and in between this simple columnar epithelium. These are goblet cells. Okay, so this is gonna secrete a lot of uh, mucus to help lubricate and protect this, this structure uh, from one, the acidity uh, of the chyme uh, the chyme solution coming out of the stomach and to help facilitate movement uh, through this tubule. So again, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you can use this model to your benefit.